single day you're going to have to learn to trust God. So I'm talking about trusting the process. Trusting the process. Say that with me. Trusting the process. Every day we make decisions, major and minor decisions and choices that affect our future every single day. And those choices we make influence our mental and our spiritual condition, our emotional and physical health. They affect the people closest to us and even the lives of those strangers that we don't even know. It still affects them. Our choices have tremendous power. Tremendous power. And the simple decision just to eat healthy can have such a ripple effect. But also a decision that we make that is contrary to helping to ensuring that our health is, is good could literally have such a harmful effect as, as well. So a thoughtless decision can carry just as much harm as a good one. Poor decisions are born out of fear. I want to say that one more time. Poor decisions are born out of fear. Don't allow fear to control your decisions. Don't allow fear to control your choices. And when you decide to let go of some things, it gives you space to grow when you let go. You can't grow when your life is cluttered with junk. And sometimes, hear me on this, when you make a choice to let go of some people, you give them an opportunity to grow. Because if they're not willing to go with you, grow with you, they're not willing to go with you. And you cannot be afraid to let them go. You got to understand that if they're not willing to, and they're not qualified to grow with you, and they're not willing to go that extra mile with you, they can't go where God is sending you. God never promised a life that would be a bed of ease. And, and all of our wishes would come true. He never said you would never have to experience a divorce or the loss of a loved one. The only thing we need to know for certain is that God is God. Everyone else is questionable. God is the only one that is certain. And sometimes your worst enemy, beloved, is your memory. That's your worst enemy. Some people find it difficult to move on after divorce. They don't, they don't have a reason to live on and, and, and experience life to the fullest or the loss of a loved one. They think that when they lost their loved one, they lost themselves as well. Also, the loss or the f a failed business. They tend to think, well, since I failed in business, they have a fear to try again and again. Or even the betrayal, when they experience a betrayal, they all of a sudden feel as if they can't trust people. But let me tell you something. The hardest thing to do is to let go. The hardest thing is to let go. Not because you want to, but because you have to. You've got to make a choice that just because something bad happened in your life or somebody hurt you, there are some things that's worth letting go. You have to forget about what, what it caused or the hurt it caused, but remember the teaching that it, get, it taught you. There is something about when you go through something. You have to forget what hurt you, but don't forget what it taught you. You got to remember that when you're going through something. Moving on isn't about loving, not loving the other person or, uh, or forgetting about them. It's, it's about having the strength to say, I love you, but I don't love you enough. Hear, hear me on this. I love you, but I don't love you enough because you are not worth the pain. If a person is stupid enough to leave you, be smart enough to let them go. You got to let somebody go. You got to learn to let some things go. I can tell you this. Most of our garages tell us the story about our lives. Our closet tells us the same thing. There are still things you just can't let go of. Mm. Just look straight ahead like I'm not talking to you. There are some things, you, we're, we're, some people are like Fred Sanford. You just pile junk upon junk upon junk, and you just can't let it go. And that's how our lives are. We hold on to the same hurt, 
the same fears, the same anxieties, the same pressures. We hold on to our failures. We hold on to things as if there's nothing beyond them. You got to get to a place where you have to learn how to let go. And I said it before, the hardest thing to do is let go. Let go. Let go of the thing that caused your pain. Let it go. Because you'll find that you don't have to experience the pain consistently. Remember that pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. You don't have to suffer from everything you go through. Amen. Are you all listening to me this morning? Some things, even when a person walks out of your life, a spouse, you've got to be willing to let them go. Let them go. I, I tell you, one of the best stories that I found oh, is, is over in John, the sixth chapter. If you'll turn there, John, the sixth chapter, starting at the 64th verse. This is the epitome of what you and I should do when someone walks out on us or when you have to let go of some things. The Bible says in John, the sixth chapter, the 64th verse, but there are some of you who do not believe. How many of you know you can have friends, but, don't be, but, the, but they don't believe in what you're doing? Jesus said, some of you do not believe. But he says, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who, betray, who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. From that time, many of his disciples... From that time, many of his disciples, from that time, the time when he said, some of you can't go with me. From that time when he made a standard, when he made a choice, when he made a decision, when he made a statement that you can, everybody can't go with me. He said, the Bible says, from that time, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. And the 67th verse says, Then Jesus said to the twelve, the ones he chose, Do you also want to go away? Hallelujah. From that time, you notice any time you make a decision to go where God wants you to go and to do what he wants you to do, you're not going to find everybody in your corner. They're not going to stand with you. So don't look for an entourage. They're not going to be there supporting you. They're going to tell you, just go on about your business. They're going to tell you, some of, um, some of them may tell you, I'm with you, but I'm just not going to go with you. They'll tell you verbally that I'll support you. Let me tell you something. As I said, since it is the, the hardest thing to do is to let go of some things, letting go of people is just as important as letting go of things. The hardest thing to do is letting go of people who've already left you. They've made their decision. How come you haven't made yours? Amen. So I'm going to say this to the women. Young and older, if you're not married, please hear me on this. Ask God for a man that will ruin your lipstick, not your mas mascara. Amen. Ask God for that. And I'm not going to leave my men out. Those that are young and older and those that are single, don't look for the junk in the trunk. Look for the treasure in the attic. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so allow me to ask you this question. What will, it, what will it take or what will you have to let go to become the person that you know you are deep down inside? What do you have to let go? It's a question. I don't want you to answer it. I want you to think about it. What do you have to let go to become the person you really know you are deep down inside? What are you holding on? that is preventing you from soaring and living the dream that God gave you, what is it? All I want you to do is stop and think. What do you have to let go of? 
Some people say, well, I, I got to turn down the plate to lose the weight. Yeah, you got to believe that process too. You're not going to take a pill and it's not going to happen overnight. Even if you have surgery, it's not happening overnight. Whatever help you need, take it. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to make a choice. More often than we care to admit, we make poor choices out of fear every single time. And we allow fear to stop us from speaking up, from making the necessary changes or following our dreams. So fear keeps us from enjoying and participating fully in the life that God has given us. However, it doesn't have to be this way. It's important to remember that no matter how many poor choices you've made in the past, you always have the freedom to choose again. Choose the right one. The only good thing about a mistake is that it lets you know that you made the wrong choice. And I still believe in the God who is the God of miracles, the one who can turn your mistakes into miracles. I'm not saying that God is not going to all of a sudden erase the mistakes. He's just going to use it for your benefit. God doesn't waste anything. There's a law, a principle of waste that God wastes nothing. Even when he, you know, one person said, God gave me a new brain. No, God just restored the brain you have. God is not giving you new stuff. He's just restoring the old stuff. In other words, he's restoring it back to its original state. That's why when you're born again, you are born again back into the original place that God created you. It's since we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We, we have known nothing but failure all of our lives, even when we've had success. Because we equate success as money, pers the person we're with, the house we're living in. But I'm going to tell you, that's not real success. It may be a degree of success, but it's not real. The real success is, how do you get beyond the walls that you, you are imprisoned by? How do you live the life that God really wants you to live in private? Because a lot of us live a certain way outside, but we don't live it inside. So you got to make some choices this morning. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're confronting, whatever challenges you have, you're going to have to make some choices. Deuteronomy says something, and I love what Moses said here in De Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, the 19th through the 20th verse. He says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life and both you and your descendants may live. I love that. That you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. Every one of us lives with uncertainty. Life doesn't come with a guarantee. It's important to remember that God gave you life, and the life that he gave you is associated with a process. You have to choose to trust the process. Oftentimes, that's not what people are willing to do. Jeremiah tells us one of the, I think it's one of the most powerful scriptures uh, in, the, in, the, in the entire Bible, especially the Old, the Old Testament, one of them. Even though there are tons of them, I love this because it refers directly to your purpose. This is what Jeremiah 29 and 11 says. I'm reading out of the NIV. It says, I know the plans I have for you. This is what God says. I know the creator. It says, I know the manufacturer. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. God says, I know the plans. I know the plans. We can sing this. We can shout it. We can share it with strangers. But still, like so many other familiar scriptures, the words of Jeremiah have yet to arrest us. And take us captive. And we believe it with all of our hearts. Why is it that the slightest crisis 
the slightest crisis, can easily eclipse our hope. How is it that we are so quick to surrender to frustration when things aren't going well and, and abandon the process? Perhaps one of, the, one of the reasons is that we don't understand that the one thing needed to ignite God's power in us is to, refu is, is, is to refuse to not trust God. We got to choose to trust God. That's the only way that you're going to get through whatever you're going through. Whether you admit it or not, many of us simply don't trust God. We can act like we do. We can go to church every morning, Sunday morning, and even some on Wednesday night, and some even come on, on Mondays. But don't trust, but we don't trust God to the fullest. We don't trust his plan, that his plan is better than the plans we've sketched out in private. We, we will hear God tell us his plan, then we'll say, good plan, Lord, and go in our own homes and say, well, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do, and this is what I'm going to do. We don't trust his pace, nor do we trust his process. Let's be honest. We've made bad decisions because we didn't trust God. We didn't trust the process. And when we choose not to trust the process, we eventually make decisions that are diametrically opposed to the process God has chosen for us. Just because part of it is some hardship, it doesn't mean that God didn't mean for that to happen. Joseph went through a lot to get where he had to be. So what happens is that we end up breaking the sequence which is designated by God to cause us growth and happiness, but instead it only resulted in emotional damage and grief, all because we made our own plan. The scripture says many are the man plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that shall prevail. I guarantee you all of us have had plans. We've said, by the time I get 18, I want to be this way, and I want to be through school. By the time I'm 22, I want to be through college. Some of us said, I don't want to go to college. Some of us said, I want to be famous. How is that a career? <laughs> We've made all of these plans, and we have all of these hopes. And when you hear some of our youth today, how many of you that are older realize something is wrong with their brains? Life doesn't work that way. There are some things in life we, we understand now because we've experienced it. You're going to have to apply a lot of work, a lot of ingenuity, a lot of creativity, and a lot of faith. It's not going to come just because you, are just, you think that you are more favorable and you've got the, all the talent. Even Michael Jordan realized it wasn't about the talent that made him what he is. It was the reason why. The why is always more important than the how. So when you, when, when you, when you, when you, have, when you have important decisions to make, you got to make those decisions from a, from a point of, 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 of strength and not fear. You got to learn how to get in that difficult place and make choices from that place, not from your emotions because they're too uncertain. They're always shifting. You always feel this way. You feel that way. You, so don't make permanent decisions on temporary feelings. That's why husbands and wives, especially wives, don't go and tell your family about what your husband is doing. It's temporary because they're going to remember what you said and put it against him. And then you're the only one that won't realize that they're looking at you as a fool for staying there. You don't have to say amen. So don't deny your feelings. Make an appeal. Say, I'm, uh, just because I feel this way doesn't mean I'm going to surrender to it. Breathe and refuse to give in to your thoughts, the thoughts of your bad, the last bad decision you made. Let the, the painful emotions literally pass through you but not stick to you. Stop letting stuff become a part of your future. 
When you trust the process of God that God selected for you, you connect with a sense of oneness, synchronizing yourself to the only one who truly cares about the outcome of your life. And he is the only one who cares. You may think your mother and father cares to that degree, but unless they're born again and they love God with all of their hearts, they don't care as much as God cares. So how do I trust the process when I don't know what the heck I'm doing? Anybody ever ask that question? How do I trust the process? I don't even know what I'm doing in the first place. How many of you know that's a good place to be? Because since you don't know what you're doing, trust the one who does. Because since God designed and tailored the process specifically to your strengths and your weaknesses, trust him. He knows exactly where you are and what you're capable of enduring. He knows exactly what, you, what, you, what, what, what kind of perseverance and what kind of patience you have. He's literally stretching you at times because he knows your future. He knows where he is sending you. So he's preparing you. Can you imagine being ill-prepared for getting in the position of leadership? when you haven't learned how to do, go through anything in the, on the back end of that thing. So God knows exactly what he's doing. You just got to trust his process. Now that doesn't mean that every mistake you made is a part of his process because that's not the case. And we've heard people say, well, God meant for that. No, no, no. He just took those mistakes and he worked it out for his good and yours. All things work together for the, to those who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. So God doesn't waste anything. Just because you blow it, just because you have a child, had a child out of wedlock, he doesn't waste anything. He doesn't throw us away but when we fall and mess up. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't mean that everybody has the same, uh, 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 the time frame on their life. Some can play around and play around, and before they know it, they're gone. They played too long. <laughs> but you got to take advantage of being around somebody that can pour into you what God's purpose and plan is for your life. I believe this is the best place to be. I believe that. You see, so when you go up, come up against something, remember... But, but trials and temptations and, 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 and pressure is all common in life. It's common. If, you have, if you're in this flesh, you're going to have some temptations. You're going to have opposition. It's common. Crisis is common to life. You, you're not going to go throughout your whole life and never experience a crisis. It's just impossible. The Bible says this world, in this world, life is full of trouble. So it's what you do in that trouble that makes the difference. It's how are you designed. And if you don't go through the process, you're going to cut the process short. And what, what was meant to benefit you is going to harm you. And some of us don't realize what God meant to bless you with, you turn it around and it curses you. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 13th verse, catch this. He says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. So nobody can say, my temptation is different than your temptation. All of us have the same form of temptation. It just may come through a different source. But it's the same bet time, the same bet channel. Amen. So no temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful. You see, only a faithful God who has a plan for your life can determine what you're going to experience in life. And don't forget, he's already made provision for those mistakes. <laughs> he knows you're already prone to make mistakes. You're set up for them. You're like 
a, 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 an animal led to its, 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 its death. You, you, you don't realize how the enemy, the devil, sets you up and God already made provisions. He didn't take the devil out. He just made sure that his strength will never surpass the level of your strength. And this is why he says, but God is faithful who will not allow. In other words, he will not give permission to any temptation or any problem that is so unbearable that you can't take it. So I'm going to tell you this. If you surrender, it's not because you couldn't do it. It's because you chose to give in. That's why. God did not allow you to go through something. I don't care who you are. You can never say, it's unbearable. <laughs> if he put you in a situation, believe me, it's bearable. That's why you see humanity sometimes go through the most horrific things. But the Bible says that he will not allow, he will not give permission to be tempted beyond what you are able, what you are able, but with the temptation, along with the temptation, he's not going to eliminate the temptation. It's a part of the process. How do you experience developing muscles if I lift the weights for you? So with the temptation, you got to experience it. You got to know what it feels like to say no. You got to experience and know what it feels like to walk away from things you want, but you know it's bad for you. Because some people know there are things that they want is bad for them, but they still take it and they still do it. How many of you know if you've ever smoked, smoking could be hazardous to your health? And I smoked. And I didn't smoke because I thought it was the best thing for my health. I smoked because. It made me fit in. That's why I smoked. And then after I got accustomed to smoking, and when I wanted to stop, I couldn't stop. Because your first choice always leads you into some habit. Once you make a decision to do something, it's easier to do it the next time. Then the next time, and the next time, and before you know it, you're hooked. That's all the devil wants, for you to give it a try. Just do it one time. Just lie one time. Just cheat one time. Just steal one time. Just kill one time. Just do it one time. And the next time is easier. Just go through one divorce. Then the next divorce is easy. Then the next divorce is easy. Then the next divorce is easy. And before you know it, you'll be a person that'll be like Elizabeth Taylor, always giving advice. I won't keep you long. <laughs> you got to come to a place where you realize that whatever, is, if you're born again, whatever you're experiencing, especially when you didn't make the choice to get there, God set it up. You should say, why, God, am I here? What, what is the reason? What's going what's to happen in the process? So you got to learn to trust God and trust the process. That, uh, that's, that leads me to Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, trust in the Lord, and that's through the seventh verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, not some of it, but with all your heart. This is when you got to give it your all. You can't be half-hearted in giving in and surrendering everything to God. It says, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. You know what that word means? It means don't look for the, yourself to support yourself. You're the wrong brace. Because you'll always say yes to yourself. <laughs> I don't think it's so bad. Do you think? No, I don't think it's so bad. You'll always agree with yourself. You agree with your feelings. That's why you say, I feel like you've already said, I'm agreeing with me. So God is saying, don't trust you. Don't lean on you. Lean on me. 
He says, lean not on your own understanding, and that's another problem. We always say, well, that's just how I see it. How you see it doesn't make it right. It's just how you see it. You got to change how you see it to the way God sees it, and then it's right. So he says, in all your ways, how many ways? That means in marriage, in business, in raising children, in teaching, uh, uh, in, in, in uh, doing what it is, in your, uh, teaching in schools, whatever your job is. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and what is he going to do? You think it's wrong to ask God, God, should I marry this person? Most of the time we'll say, no, I don't think it's wrong. I'm just not going to ask him because I don't want him to say no because I love this person. He beats me on Monday, feeds me on Tuesday, <laughs> cheats on me on Wednesday. I love him. I love him so much. Let me tell you something that's a problem. When, if you can't acknowledge God, and this is why sometimes your kids, they don't come to you. They come to you after the mistake, the wrong choice. They didn't come and say, hey, Dad, you know, uh, here's Jabo. <laughs> Jabo got his head to the side, shorts on. He's 39 years old, by the way. And he comes in, I just want to be an individual, so that's all I want to do. More power to the people. And my daughter wants me to agree with her and say, don't you just love them? No. <laughs> Where are you going with him? Right. Where is life going to take you with that person? You see, you, this is what people don't realize. Where is that person going to take you? See, some of you got married to somebody you thought was the right choice, only to realize they took you to the wrong place, and you regret your right choice. Mm. I'd rather wait on the right choice. Sometimes, hear me now, so that you don't get all big-headed on this, sometimes the right choice comes with the right heart. That means you got to get right before you're able to see right. <laughs> if you're not right, you'll never see right. <laughs> okay, okay. But God is saying, trust in me. Don't lean on your own understanding. He says, in all your ways acknowledge me and I'll direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Isn't it funny how you can find a fool who thinks they're the wisest? And the scripture says, fear the Lord and depart evil. It's evil, listen, it's evil to trust you. The Bible never said trust in your own instincts. Some of you, if you've been down long enough, you'll find your end do stink. Some of you will catch that later. <laughs> Some of you are trying to figure out. <laughs> are you all listening to me? God's never told you to trust in yourself. Don't trust in your own decisions. Every time you, you find somebody, well, you know, I'm going to do this. I, I've been trained in this, and I've been trained in that, and we're going to make the right choices, and those choices, and it's sad when you never admit to your mistakes. You never admit to, I missed God. I didn't seek God earnestly. That's what makes people not want to follow you. Are you listening to me? When you don't admit, I messed up. I blew it. Honey, we're broke. You're just telling me we're broke? <laughs> you won't admit it. God can't help you when you won't admit it. He cannot redirect you when you don't acknowledge him. 
You've already been directed by your own thoughts. And in your eyes, you're right. And in your eyes, you're going in the right direction. And in your eyes, you're pursuing the right thing. But what about God on, that other, on the other end that is saying, I'm over here. You're over there. And somehow you're trying to convince those who are with you, your spouse, your, your children, your, what, your business, whatever it is, you're trying to convince them that you're where God is. And you know deep in your heart, God is not where you are. To trust is to surrender. That means to come out of your circumstances with your hands up. That's what it means. I give up. I blew it. That's what you do. To surrender is is to surrender is to open yourself, to, to, to reveal the child likeness and vulnerability that you have. That's what it means. To open yourself to risk of get, the, the risk of getting hurt means to feel the pain but allow the healing. And then to risk getting hurt is to increase the probability of success because success inevitably always follows failure. When you assemble the courage to trust God and to trust the process, you access the power to transform your world, your spouse world, your, your business world, your, your employees world, even maybe even your dog's world. If you'll just assemble the courage to trust the process because authentic power comes from being responsible and accountable for your life. Making the right choice, acknowledging God in all your ways and allowing him to direct your path. Now, prayerfully, by the end of this day, I'll give you some information that's going to help you. That, and it's going to answer how to trust the process when you don't know what you're doing. When you don't have a clue to what you're doing. And I'm, I've been there and I know. And, 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 and I'm right there again. And I, and I don't mind it. But sometimes it feels good to know some things. I'm going to give you this A. Write this down. A. I'm not going one, two, three. I'm giving you A, B, C. Because A, B, C is easy as one, two, three. Simple as do, re, me. A, B, C. One, two, three. Baby, you and me. Anyway. That's my 70s stuff. You know, I, I just... I just, I'm just stuck in the, I'm stuck in the 70s. <laughs> you know, it's funny, when, my, my son, who is nine years old, he was in the back seat, and, and uh, I had, I had it on the groove station, and, uh, and, and it, here comes the old song, Ain't No Stop, and I was like, you don't know that song. I know that song, Daddy. Everybody knows that song. That's an example of being old when you have a child. <laughs> Singing all the Stevie Wonder songs. <laughs> you are the sunshine of my life. A, don't be stopped by not knowing. Write that down. Don't be stopped by not knowing. Because how is overrated? How is overrated? How is the enemy of progress? How is the barrier to trusting God and the process? Now, as I said earlier, I'm not saying that it it doesn't feel good to know once in a while what you're doing. But, but, But if you're waiting until you know exactly what you're doing, you'll, you'll never do anything. So you can't wait until you know everything. Because you're really never ready. Nobody is. Whether you're starting a business or starting a relationship, starting a new career, trusting the process literally means traversing the peripheral of your competence, literally crossing that line. It means trusting God and his plan. And that's exactly what I did when I was 23 years old when I got out of the military. I didn't know what in the world I was doing when I started the insurance agency and took over half of the bank, the fourth floor of a bank downtown here in El Paso, being in a foreign area, 
I called it a foreign country back then. But being in a foreign area, not knowing much about the city, God told me to get out, come back to El Paso, start a church. And I didn't start until God told me exactly when to start. But he gave me all the business experience. So the business experience helped me with the church. Sometimes we think that experience is bad. But God sometimes takes us around one way to get this to help this. Are you all listening to me? So when it came to employment and, drawing and, 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 and having a, a starting, a, a, a starting a business or, and then having that, and then when I went, went into pastoring, I was, only, I was almost 24. So I knew how to start. I knew how to start when you didn't know how to start. And it started with trusting God. Always. Sometimes you got to realize that you'll only find your way when you get on your way. You'll only find your way when you get on your way. You'll only experience... The, the knowledge when you go. There's a scripture over in, in Luke, the 17th chapter, uh, the 12th verse, concerning uh, leopards. It says, in fact, Luke 17 and 12, it says, Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were leopards, who stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus Master, have mercy on us. Catch this. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was so. As they went, they were cleansed. He said, Show yourselves to the priests. Now you got to understand what he was saying. He was saying to them, Before you experience the healing, trust the process of what I said. Go show yourself to the priest, knowing that if you show yourself, go out in the public with that leprosy, knowing you would be killed. You could be stoned to death immediately. But they didn't care. They understood and obeyed the process. And as they went, they were healed. So here's what I've learned. Eventually, you'll just, you're just going to have to jump in the pool with all your clothes on. That's what I've experienced. You've got to jump in with all your clothes on and just, and, and, and just believe that you're going to learn how to swim before that water fills your lungs. You're going to have to learn sometimes how to trust God and, 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 and just jump and, and believe you'll grow wings on the way down. And if the fall doesn't kill you, you'll be able to write your book. They'll make a movie about you. And all of your success will come from that one experience. One experience. Did you ever notice that most of the people who all of a sudden got wealthy quick made it from one, one error, one blunder, one mistake, or one bad choice, or one... Uh, uh, experience, something they went through, all of a sudden, everybody wants to hear their story. All you got to do is jump. Get out there and just let it go. Trust God. God said do it. Go. That means you got to let go of your fear. It's time to make a splash that matters. It's time to jump in. Remember, you, you, you don't have to get good, you don't have to be good to get going. But when you get going, you do get good. You get better at what you're doing when you start doing it. So what are you waiting on? Whose permission are you waiting for? Who are you waiting for to tell you? Well, you know, are you waiting for the approval of your spouse? Are you waiting for the approval of some friend, some friend that, that doesn't want you to go anywhere anyway, don't want you to experience anything because it means leaving them? I saw two women, all of a sudden, they, uh, one got serious with a man, and somehow she tried to sabotage her experience with that young man, all because she felt that her friend was leaving her. 
that could be a good thing. In fact, that showed that she really never had a real friend in the first place. She had someone that literally thought that they could control her. And when you lose control, that's the problem. Catch this. The second, the th second thing, B, I got to hurry up. B, restore the balance. Restore the balance. The reason it's so hard to trust the process is because it's a form of surrendering. That's why it's difficult to trust the process. And it's terrifying for most people to think that they got to let go. I remember when I was taking flying lessons, and one of the things that they would say that when you're in a Cessna 150 and you're flying and all of a sudden your plane goes vertical and you're losing control, you, you, you become disoriented. He says, the, the, the best thing to do that will help you to survive is to let go of the controls because the plane is designed to straighten out itself when it goes vertical. But you got to trust the process. Most of us are like in fear that we got to take our hands off. But God is saying, take your hands off. Because when you get your hands off, that means God can get his on it. Are you listening to me? Take your hands off and let the plane straighten itself out. Some people will never really be saved, truly saved. Because they can't see themselves letting go and giving God control. They'll go to church. They'll give their tithe. But they, they just cannot give God full control. Man, that means you've got to throw up your hands and say, I surrender. You've got to come to a place at one time or another where you surrender to God because you know that you know that you know he knows more about you than you know about yourself. Paul said something in Galatians 2 and 20. He says, I am crucified with Christ and no longer I that live. He said, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, he said, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved and gave himself for me. Thank you, Lord. When it's hard to let go of your life, it's difficult to let go of your past. It's difficult to let go of your pain and your hurt. And when a person is bound to repeat their mistakes, it's because they can't See, trusting the process, letting go of things is far less weightier than holding on to them. See, become the passionate person concerning the why and not the how. This is the biggest problem. How are you going to do it, God? What the heck do you care about how he does it? Just, just believe he's going to do it. That's our biggest problem. We're trying to figure out how is God going to do it. But when you infuse your process with deep purpose, it's noticeably easier to trust God because you know the reason why you're going through. And that's why habits are critical because they carve the pathway. They, the, the, when you have a ritual to do things, a custom, Good habits and practices will create a sacred seal around you to become engaged in the next step. The most powerful word in your life for tomorrow is next. Man, if you get turned on to next, oh my God, you will know that where you are is not the epitome of where you're going. Your greatest victory is always your next one. When you keep talking about yesteryear and how it was in the good old days, man, something is wrong. You're not going forward. I want to give you this word. Trusting the process is a spiritual discipline, an investment, a stability in your life. No one sets out to untrust God. No one. But what happens is we can't let go. We can't let go. Stand to your feet. I want you to let go of some things. This morning, I want you to let go. I want you to let go. 
You need to turn off that cooler. I want you to let go. I don't know what it is. I asked you a question. What do you believe and what do you think is in you that's keeping you from really being the person you really are deep down inside?